As he mentioned, temperatures continue to rise, and as they do so, pasture fly populations will continue to grow as well. With that in mind, horn fly control measures may need to be implemented as soon as possible in order to avoid any economic injury levels from impacting your cattle. Market Journal's Bill Dodd recently caught up with an extension educator to discuss how fly populations can impact your herd and how you can help mitigate any negative effects on your cattle. The horn fly has been and continues to be one of the most highly impacting pasture flies livestock producers have had to deal with in the United States. As we prepare to enter summer months, the economic injury levels for cattle could become a valid concern among cattle producers. Uh, research done here at Nebraska and other places uh, in the country and Canada have shown that um, weaning weights of calves can be impacted anywhere from 12 to 20 pounds. Now, the horn fly can also impact uh, yearling cattle, um, stalkers, and uh, replacement heifers, and that impact can, it can be up to 18 percent. So it's um, it's a really a problematic fly and numbers build rather quickly, it can go from egg to adult in about 14 days. So what you get over the summer is overlapping fly generations. And then as we move through the summer towards uh, late August, early September, you see huge populations of horn flies that sometimes can often exceed uh, 2,000 flies per, per animal. Producers need to provide some type of fly control. And as you reach that end point of summer, you may have to alter your current fly control methodologies uh, or, or try to improve the efficacy somehow uh, to reduce the, the, the stress on the animals and, and improve animal welfare. When it comes to mitigation of these pests, there are a number of tools available for producers to choose from. However, making sure you're keeping fly populations below that threshold for economic injury will be imperative. Well, we have a, a, a series of products. Um, we, we can go back to the uh, dust bags of the old days that were used very, very successfully and still can be used successfully, um, uh, especially if they're set up in a forced use arrangement where the animals have to walk, say, through an alleyway and get in contact with, with, the, with the dust bag. Back rubbers are, and oilers are still very popular because it allows the animals to satisfy their need to scratch. So the animals will kind of rub up against them. But here again, to get maximum effect from a back rubber or an oiler, they really need to be forced use. Uh, animal sprays have actually increased in popularity over the last five to 10 years, and um, they can be applied using several different types of sprayers. Uh, porons uh, have been used quite a bit and are still very, very popular. Um, they will have to be retreated um, through the season if you uh, exclusively use a poron. Feed additives and insect growth regulators have been very popular for the last 20 years. Um, insecticide ear tags have been out and around for over 30 years. We, uh, we encourage people who want to use an insecticide ear tag is to delay long as possible before applying that ear tag. And in my studies, uh, I found that uh, delaying uh, application until about the last week of May or the first uh, week of June will give you the, the most impact from that particular uh, delivery method. And then lastly is a horn fly trap. It's a walkthrough trap. Horn flies uh, are attracted to light, so uh, automatically they will fly up to the top of the, of the trap and be caught there and captured. So we're seeing a lot of people who want to um, raise their animals uh, organically or naturally, kind of uh, gravitate to this type of fly control. While moisture is key for the development of these particular flies, we could be on the threshold of a decrease in population as we've experienced more arid conditions as of late. However, we should still be vigilant. So we could actually see a shift in um, the, uh, the stable fly pressure this year if it remains uh, a little bit uh, more uh, 
uh, wet than um, we've seen in the last couple of years. Uh, last summer was a good uh, indicator where we had very dry conditions and we had fewer pasture stable fly numbers than in the previous couple of years. Uh, the face fly problem can be uh, problematic, especially in the eastern part of the state where there's higher moisture uh, and, and more bountiful rainfall. Uh, so those, those face flies will probably be coming, uh, coming out here very soon. And uh, the producers should need to be uh, on the lookout for uh, face flies also. Cattle producers should check on their cattle weekly during fly season in order to ensure that economic injury level is not being encroached upon. This can usually be done when checking salt and mineral. Whatever your plan of attack, fly season is upon us, and the time to be mindful of their impacts on your cattle is now. Reporting for Market Journal, I'm Bill Dodd. <laughs>